Hello, and we're back with Off the Press. This is James Berger with Bakersfield, California, and I'm joined today, as always, by uh, Nicole Parra uh, and uh, Russ Johnson, who we've introduced in the past, so I'll zip right along to those are my f- wonderful co-hosts. And Just ask your questions. Yeah. <laughs> You've been dying to ask the congressman. Um, and, of course, our guest, David Valdeo. Um, so, um, as, as folks who've listened on the show a bit know, I, I love the 21st Congressional District. I love covering it. My job is to report up on it. Um, it's, it's, a fa- it's a fantastic... Why? ...diverse. It, because it's interesting. It's, it's, a, it's this geographical district that stretches all up the valley, picks up all these rural, small communities. Uh, it's very diverse, very different. Always it, lots of drama with the boat Always county. lots of it drama. It was gerrymandered so it could be a Democrat seat. It, 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 but that you know, but it was done in, in accordance with the Voting Rights Act. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wasn't the chairman uh, a big Democrat donor? They found out after it was all said and done. All of those oh, things let are. Oh, let the games begin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have you've won it twice. Yes, sir. So you haven't really uh, been hurt by that. So, no. um, and, and that's why it's interesting is because these you know even election night the you, the Republican always starts starts at the top. This happened with Costa. In similar district, it happened with Vidac. They always start way ahead, and then the votes come in, and it changes as the diver- as the, e- the different communities and different groups of people come in, and it's very interesting to watch and figure out where that's going to end up. And and you know, it is a very diverse div- district. It's very diverse. There's, there's a lot a lot of Latino Latinos, but their points of view on politics and faith and all those things are very diverse as well. And so you have. Um, I, I think almost a microcosm of the the country, really, in in and what the country might become, um, and I, so I find it deeply intriguing. So, you represent this. You've won twice, um, very handily both times. Uh, once against a weak opponent, or another time against a very strong opponent. Uh, last uh, with Amanda Matria, and as you mentioned, uh, Pre- Vice President Joe Biden came to Cal State Bakersfield and. Campaigned against you, um, and you still won uh, with fifty-eight uh, percent of the vote, I believe. Something like that. Um, and so, this year's a little bit different. Um, in the primary was a little bit different. You had two uh, aggressive camp- Democratic campaign uh, running. They, uh, your opponent is Emilio Huerta, son of Dolores Huerta, very uh, prominent uh, in the labor community and civil rights community here, and the Latino community. And uh, and so you're facing a uh, a campaign against that. You've in the primary, you got about 55 percent of the vote, still a win, but uh, Renteria was able to reduce your uh, vote last time by about five percent. Uh, so you could uh, between the primary and the general, and so you know it it it's could go either way potentially. What are you doing to make sure that it doesn't happen that way? So um, you're right. The primary is much tighter this time than it has been in the past. Um, but there are some differences this year versus the past few years. This is the year I did the least in the primary, um, and this is also the year that uh, had the most. I mean, California actually mattered in a presidential race. And if you look at the Democrat turnout versus the Republican turnout, um, Republicans turned out just 4,000 people above normal, and I think Democrats turned out about 20,000 above normal. So the Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton played a huge role in drawing people out. and so that. But when you look at the numbers, too, 60% of the turnout was Democrat, and I still won. So that is a positive sign. Our goal now is to try to get as many Republicans out as possible to make sure they show up. My district is uh, 31% Republican and almost 50% Democrat. So it is a tough, uh, tough hill to climb, but uh, we haven't changed anything. We're just, we didn't spend as much in our primary as we have in the past, and that focus on that was to make sure that we had the resources necessary for the general because we obviously know the general is going to be a, a much tougher situation. Right. And so... Uh, Obviously, you know your your incumbent that helps you a little bit with with voters across all spectrums. Um, so that th- there's a little bit of help. You've done well in the past with Democrats in the past two elections, as well. Um, what do you think the primary? Y- you mentioned that uh, again uh, that Trump and or, or Hillary and Clinton or Hillary and no, I'm messing it up that Bernie and Clinton had a strong race in that propel voters out do you think that there is going to be that level of interest in the the presidential race in november it's really hard to say today what it's going to look like in november but right now it doesn't look like it's going to be that 
that competitive of a race. And uh, especially being here on the coast, uh, I remember in 2012 leaving Bakersfield and driving up to, uh, to Hanford. And before I got to Hanford and before I showed up to my event at 8 o'clock, they had already announced that um, Romney had lost. And so things like that do have an impact. And you start to see some of the polling numbers. You start to see some of the things going on. Uh, it will have an impact. I don't know how uh, it will impact all of our races because if everybody on both sides decides not to turn out, I mean, that could be – and then it turns it into a real race. Uh, but Republicans tend to show up. And so even having a 16, 17-point disadvantage, because Republicans typically show up and vote, it does give you that little bit of an edge. It does. And it's, it's made the difference in the race in the past two elections. Um, the question is, will – obviously, will the Republican presidential candidate drive people to the, the, the ballot? You know, they're, you're, most of your most of your constituency is Latino. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, as, the, uh, as Nicola said, the Trump is trying to soften his, his ver verbiage towards minorities and Latinos. And and, but he – said some pretty blunt and uh, aggressive things about the nature of those mm -hmm. people who you represent. No, I know. And that's something that we've obviously been very uh, aware of. Sure. And, uh, and the thing that in the district I ran in uh, 2012, and Obama won the district pretty handily, mm -hmm. and we actually outperformed Obama in the district. So um, we've always been able to separate ourselves. We separated ourselves from uh, and ran our own independent race from Meg Whitman. Uh, we've, you know, we did it with Romney, and we continue to work and do our job uh, in the Valley and make sure we touch voters as much as possible and talk to them so that they know that I am who I am, and whatever they decide to do at the top of the ticket is their business, but uh, I've done my best to represent them, and, and I hope they remember that on, on Election Day. And my goal is to make sure they do. Right. So yeah. I worked on uh, a lot of that same district when it was different a little bit. In 2004, uh, at the time I worked for a state senator who was running for Congress trying to take out Jim Costa. And at that time, it's I got a, an education on how much the Republican National uh, con Congressional Committee and then you got the Democrat, California, or the triple C. I forget what all the C's are for, but ultimately, so much of a decision happens back in D.C., and then all of a sudden, the floodgates open, money comes in, more TV ads, more mailers, all these different things. Are you seeing anything different this election than last election on that front? And then also, are you getting any real access to some really unique new technology that you're using out in the field when you're going door to door, or you're identifying voters. Is there anything new technology wise you're employing? Yeah, there's there is always we started using some of the electronic technology last time, but we're we're probably gonna use more this time, uh, iPads and iPhones, but we've done that in the past. Um, but as far as the DCCC, the difference between DCCC and NRCC over the last few years, um, two years ago they were very active uh, and even in twelve uh, they did try to get uh, Blong Zhang through over John Hernandez, and they actually spent quite a bit of money, but they weren't able to get him across. Uh, this has been the least active the DCCC has ever been in my race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and folks are talking about that. In less than 90 days, is your opponent going to be able to put the team less together? Than 80. 80 days like from last week. Or Look at you. It, He's was, ready it was 77 because it's 76 today. I'm, right. I'm counting right. down the right. days. Right, you're counting down. <laughs> like, uh, we still have the calendar, too. So, so can he put that? campaign together and then one question I always like to ask is you know how important vote by mail will be because of the things that you talked about you know the election starts actually to be you know, on Facebook in a month uh, folks will start voting so are you also going to add on I know you do a great VBM campaign uh, continuing to do what you did best and then just um, depending on you being out there your staff being out there and especially a more of a presence I'm partial to Kern County more of a presence presence in Kern County because your opponent is from Kern County? So, um, yes, we're doing everything. The one thing we are doing di uh, different this year that we hadn't done in the past is we never stopped. Uh, the uh, Our campaign wing never stopped. Mm -hmm. So after the election was over, we continued to call and reach out and talk to voters throughout the whole process. So uh, we did do that differently this year, so we have ID'd voters a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, during the primary, we just we weren't as active. We weren't chasing. We weren't uh, calling as much, and we weren't walking. Was that because you are just waiting to see if it was PARA? You really didn't, to be honest, have to put in that many resources versus Huerta, and maybe some Republican resources were used to bump PARA up, so that's why you kind of stayed behind? Or 
or didn't do as much in the primary? We didn't do as much. We felt pretty comfortable we were going to make it through, and uh, and we wanted to save. No, research. not you. That you were just watching to see who would make it through. Well, we, me, right. uh, I was also looking to make sure we save resources for right. the general because that's where the fight's going to be. Yeah, right. And the one thing that's happened nationally that a lot of folks will seem that don't realize is there are 435 seats in Congress, and to assume that the Democrat Party, the Republican Party, has the resources to just go dump mm -hmm. all these different resources in all these races. Um, California is not a state that can swing. So the members of Congress who are in tough districts in Colorado, Florida, Virginia, uh, and those types of states are the ones that they're going to really feel a lot of heat because the, d uh, the presidential races will just mm -hmm. be beating down their, their districts, trying to get voters out, and then they're going to be somewhere mm -hmm. in the mix mm -hmm. trying to to stay, keep their heads above water and not get drowned out in that in that noise. Mm -hmm. And our situation is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And you have the finances. You're very healthy with your fundraising. You raise a lot of good money, and so that's going to help you also as you move the campaign in less than 70 days, right? We have a lot of supporters in the district. <laughs> 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 and so I, I guess the, the, the question for me is that will um, – we see the same patterns again. Do you think? Do you think there's going? This is going to be a different election that you're seeing because I, I, you know, there's some things that can make it, that you could say make it different this year. Yes. Um, because you you talked about the 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 John Hernandez race and 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 that one, uh, you you outperformed the him in the district the first time you ran, but he spent less than a hundred thousand dollars. He spent nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know you you with the resources you had. You, you're going to stomp him. And then last race, it was $1.7 million that she raised. <laughs> sure. And then vice president and then celebrities like sure. Eva Longoria campaigning. In a non-presidential year. And then Hillary Clinton raising money for her in San Francisco. Sure. So, yeah, we've had some we've had some interesting races. Uh, if your question is, is am I nervous and am I, ru and am I running a race because I know I'm in a real race? Yes. We are always nervous. We always run like we're behind. And we always focus on uh, doing our job right at, uh, at this point uh, on the campaign wing. Um, we're not taking anything for granted. Mm -hmm. right. so we're running a full race. I think that's a healthy attitude because Nicole and I have been through probably more campaigns than we care to count. And <laughs> if they you're were easy, though. E yeah. Our races. <laughs> yeah. If you're not running from behind, you're, right. you're going to lose. Yeah. And I think that's a healthy perspective to have. Well, and, and I mean, Nicole knows it. Mm -hmm. no, Nicole has been through some of these exact kinds of races twice. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you have Kevin McCarthy on your side. <laughs> 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 that's, a, that's always a good thing, especially the resources he can. That's majority maybe leader. Ah, plays good basketball. Right. Um, oh, does he? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think he invited me to play on the congressional basketball team this year be, or this past year because he thinks I'm better than him. Uh, uh, the well, there we Ho go. Hopefully he's listening because <laughs> <laughs> I'm still offended I didn't get, uh, I didn't get asked back. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. It was great talking to you and learning a little bit more about your family and your background and, and what it means to you to be in Congress and uh, talking to us about the race, which is going to be fantastic. Um, You're not excited. I <laughs> love this season. It's great. Uh, and thank you to uh, Russ and, uh, and uh, Nicole. And uh, tune in uh, next week uh, to Off the Press. Uh, we will have Corey Woodward uh, for a judge candidate on uh, Tuesday. And uh, Jen uh, Bloomquist, I believe her name is, in the uh, uh, for a, a city a school district seat mm -hmm. on Thursday. So, Again, off the press, we'll catch you next week, and thank you so much for being here.